Hey guys, good morning. It looks, oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Good morning. I'm Valerie. I know a lot of you guys that are regulars and <clears throat> folks have come to our Tuesday and Saturday classes. I guess we might have a few new folks um, on this platform. So Danielle and I alternate teaching this class on Tuesdays from 9.15 to 10. And I scoot out to the market right after this is over. Maybe I'll see some of you there. Give me a wave if you're going through the line today. Um, so we'll start in just a few minutes. Just a reminder, this is a gentle flow, an all levels flow, an all bodies flow. Um, the class I teach on Tuesdays, we have students from people in their 20s or even kids to um, folks in their 90s. So sometimes folks are in chairs. I apologize the way my setup is in here. I can't really teach both the chair and the mat like I do on Tuesdays um, by demonstrating, but I'll try to give those cues verbally. Um, and any of you that are staying in a chair for the whole practice, just remember that as long as you're coming back and connecting to your breath, um, that that's great. Like really, if we just all sat here and breathe together for 45 minutes, that would be um, every bit as powerful as the movement and asana that we're doing together. So, um, and I will try to watch comments. It looks like the setup might have changed a little bit since last week and I'm not super tech savvy, but, um, and I can't really see it once I scoot back, but I'll try to check it every so often. Um, so if you do have a question, let me know. I think like there was two people on a minute ago. Um, so we'll get started in just a couple minutes. I'll hang out here for just a minute in case anybody wants to say hello or has a question before we get going. Oh, we are going to use a bolster today. I have a bolster, um, but over my shoulder here, um, I also took two quilts and stacked them up, and you can see that's similar <clears throat> in the height. I'm gonna spin my water to my bolster over there. So if you don't have a bolster at home, no worries. You could um, fold up a quilt, fold up a couple of beach towels, or even one if you don't have two, that's fine. Hey, Patricia, good morning. Good to see you. Um, and if you don't have one at all, don't stress, again, um, you know, don't stress about not having the perfect things, right? Just being here together is what's important. Um, and also just a note too, like this for both Danielle and I, this is a really new format. Um, and as we've mentioned, both of us, neither of us are super tech savvy. So um, thanks for being patient with us. And it's also really different just not being together in person, right? There's a certain energy um, of sharing a physical space together, right? Um, and so I do think we can still have tune into that energy when we're not physically together, but some, it's a little harder or maybe just a little different. It's a new skill, right? Um, so looking forward to being here in the space, this space <laughs> and the bigger space with all of you this morning. And, um, if you have any suggest, any requests or anything, I'll drop those in now because we're going to start in just a minute. I'm hanging out up close just to be able to see any comments. <sighs> Taking a couple breaths. I burned some sage. Just try to clear my space a little bit. <clears throat> if you have sage or a palo santo or mugwort or really anything that you like incense. I'm just uh, using that with intention to clear your space. All right, so... There are no requests or anything. I'm going to scooch back and we'll get started. Um, also, like I said, I'll check every so often, but if you can't hear me, once I scoot back, let me know. All right, let's breathe and move together, you guys. I feel like I'm so far away. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so go ahead and find your way to a comfortable seat, whether that's sitting cross-legged on a bolster or blanket, here's my little homemade bolster of quilts, <clears throat> again you can use your towels or whatever works for that, 
um, or maybe you're in a chair, but just go ahead and find that comfortable seat. And begin to take a few breaths. You can keep the eyes open or slightly closed. I'm taking a few breaths through the nostrils, inhaling, and exhaling through the mouth for the first few breaths. Just releasing any tension that you might be holding. We're beginning, right? Beginning to release. Maybe even as you release, making some movements with the mouth and jaw. Nice. And then as you're ready, beginning to transition to our yoga breath, ujjayi breath, or ocean breath. So breathing in through the nostrils. Breathing into the chest, the ribs, the belly, exhaling through the nostrils. So we're going to take several breaths this way. So we're using the breath to tune in to our physical body, to the physical space that we're in, <clears throat> and also to this energetic space that we're sharing, right? I mentioned in the beginning before we started that I know sometimes, at least for myself, this way of being together is so different and sometimes feels harder to connect. Um, so just honoring that, if that's true for you, maybe that's not true for you. It might feel more of a connection. But just with curiosity and acceptance, honoring whatever might be coming up about the way we're sharing about that today. <laughs> Commenting. <clears throat> All right, so let's do a few neck rolls and shoulder rolls. Inhaling as you exhale, releasing the chin towards the chest, drawing the left ear to left shoulder. I'm going to mirror you guys most of the time, I think. Um, but in case I get mixed up with left and right, just make sure you're always going to both directions. So just continuing that movement, making circles. I got a little crick in my neck this morning, you guys. So when I go to my left, it's a little tighter than the other side. Is that funny? <laughs> hmm. And then coming back to center, inhaling the shoulders up, exhaling, rotating down and around. Um, just a reminder too, this uh, video, even though it's live, will stay on the Bounty and Soul page. So if this isn't a good time for you or something comes up during the class, <clears throat> you can always come back to it at a later time. Inhaling up, exhaling forward. And then let's do a few shrugs, inhaling the shoulders up, exhale through the mouth. Two more. Nice. And let's inhale. As we exhale, release the chin towards the chest, drawing the Left ear to left shoulder, extend the left arm out, palm facing up. And then we're going to bring that hand to rest on the ear and the jaw. So gentle pressure, head towards the face, jaw towards the hand. So that sort of isometric squeeze is helping to intensify the stretch on the neck, if you'd like, and you're in control of how deep that stretch is. Couple more breaths here. Inhale, and as you exhale, releasing that left hand to the floor, keeping the gaze on that grounded hand as you lift the opposite hand up, making circles with the hand, the wrist, in both directions. And the fist in circles. <clears throat> and then inhale, looking up towards that extended arm. Big inhale, belly expands. Allow that arm to drop back. Inhale, and then as you exhale, reaching that hand forward, 
Left hand is reaching out to the side. Right hand forward. Hips are grounded. So there's a triangulation happening here. Lengthening the spine. Yes. And then we're going to bring the opposite around, hands in front. So hands could be really close to the feet and shins, or maybe they're further out. I'm going to inhale, lengthening the spine. Exhale, falling down. So if you were seated, you could do this. Your hands would be on your lap. <clears throat> your hands would probably be on your legs with your feet on the floor. Inhaling up and exhaling down. I've got my <clears throat> blinds closed here, but the light's really bright this morning. <clears throat> and then walking the hands back. <clears throat> Inhaling in as you exhale, releasing the chin towards the chest. Drawing the right ear towards the right shoulder. This is my side that's a little kinky this morning, you guys. It's a little tight. <clears throat> and then extending that arm out. Palm facing up, thumb towards the wall behind you. Inhale, and as you exhale, Finding that sweet spot again of support and pressure. And three breaths here. And then releasing that hand, grounding the hand. Keeping your gaze on that grounded palm as you lift the opposite arm up. And find circles in both directions. Inhale, looking up towards that extended arm. Big inhale, allowing that arm to float behind you, opening all through the chest. Inhale, as you exhale, reaching long. So let's see, left fingertips reach long and forward, right hands out to the side. This hip is being drawn down and back, both hips actually, down and back. Coming back to that breath. Oh, I forgot I was going to do um, alternate nostril breathing today. So maybe we'll, we'll do that before we come on to hands and knees in just a minute. And slowly, actually, let's bring that opposite arm around, grounding the palms. One more time, this little flow. Inhaling up, exhale, folding forward. Again, that could be here. Inhale up. So forward, could be out here. And walking the hands back. All right, so before, actually, let's shake the legs out a little bit because we've been uh, sitting cross-legged for a little bit. So if you like, you can shake it out. You guys have so much dog here. We have a dog. Um, it's not out right now, otherwise he'd be joining us. <laughs> All right. So you can leave the legs extended if that's more comfortable, um, but we're just going to do a little bit of breath before coming on the hands and knees for some more movement. Um, so some of you may have done this if you've been to class with Danielle or I, but it's alternate nostril breathing. So it's about balancing out <clears throat> the left and right side of the body. Left side being generally um, connected to a feminine energy, <clears throat> excuse me, right to masculine. Um, so this breath is both energizing and calming at the same time. So we're going to bring the index finger and middle finger to the bridge of the nose. <clears throat> I'm not mirroring you guys now. So the thumb's going to close off the right nostril as we inhale through the left nostril. Ring finger is going to close off that left nostril as we exhale through the right. Inhale through the right nostril. Thumb closes off that right nostril. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left nostril. Ring finger closes off the left nostril. Exhale through the right. Inhale right. Close off the right nostril. Exhale left. So continuing at your own pace for a few more rounds of that. Mm 
You can also experiment either now or at a later time with just doing one side or the other. If you're ever wanting to calm your system down a little bit, you could read just through the left. And if you're ever feeling a need to sort of invigorate your system, you could read just through the right. You might even notice a little temperature difference with the left side being cooler. And then releasing, just noticing what there is to notice. This can also be nice for opening sinuses a little bit. <laughs> And just a couple of breaths here. Um, let's do a little bit of seated cat cow. Welcome onto our knees for some cat cow in just a moment. Seated. Again, these movements could be as small or deep as you like. And next time that you're forward, moving from forward to left and right, all the way around. Staying really grounded through the tailbone. Same for if you're in a chair, if you're in a chair, feet are on the floor, your tailbone is staying really grounded to that seat. Changing directions if you didn't already. And coming back to center. So drawing the soles of the feet together. <clears throat> Maybe give yourself a little um, bit of a foot massage so that would feel nice, like in our arches, right? Um, if you're seated for this one, you might be want to scoot up to it slightly more towards the edge of your chair. Um, and you could still put the soles of your feet together on the floor. And your legs would still be falling open a little. So we're stretching. We're going to do a lot of hip opening today. <clears throat> and you might want to flap your butterfly wings. I used to teach kids yoga and this was a butterfly. <laughs> And then lengthening the spine, inhaling as you exhale, folding forward. Still with a straight spine initially. And then exhale, folding forward. Three to five breaths. Here. And slowly coming up. So at this point, if you have a bolster, your bolster is going to go on the side of your, let's see if I'm mirroring, so your left hip. Both legs are pointed towards your left. Your left foot is at the meeting with the right knee. So turn sideways. There's the bolster, or it could be the second wing foot. Go like this. The blankets or towel are here. So pause for just a moment, allowing this leg behind you to relax. If you're seated in a chair, you can cross your left leg over your right, <clears throat> and then you'll be twisting. Um, sorry, mirroring is hard, you guys. <laughs> if you're seated, you can cross your left leg over your right and then be twisting towards the left. <laughs> All right, so those of us on, the, on your mat, inhaling up. Exhale, we're going to turn towards your bolster or stack of blankets. Inhale here, exhale, lowering down. We're going to flow three times before we lower down. If you're seated, um, you're crossing that left leg over the right and twisting towards the left. Holding on maybe to the back of the chair. And then folks here, we're going to come to rest <clears throat> on the bolster, blanket, or towels. You can be facing the same direction as your knees, or for a little bit more of a twist, you could be facing behind you. I'm going to face this way so I can see you guys. <clears throat> so again, options here. Um, if you're in a chair, you could do a twist. You could also do a twist, a seated twist on your mat. If this isn't what you're feeling, or you don't have um, a blanket handy. About finding three breaths here. Mm 
And then grounding down through the palms, inhaling up. I'm going to come into tabletop, hands on either side of our bolster or blanket. And <clears throat> coming into our cat cow here. So inhaling, lifting the tailbone, lifting the chin. Exhale, drawing navel towards the spine, chin towards the chest. Inhale. And exhale. Coming back to neutral spine. Inhale as you exhale. We're going to squeeze that. Um, okay, I've got to set up my mirroring. Sorry, you guys, this part is challenging on video. So we're going to squeeze the um, right shoulder towards the right hip. <clears throat> And if I get, if, if I make it confusing with left to right, just make sure that you're alternating. And inhaling back to center. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. Inhale as you exhale, we're gonna step that left foot back. <clears throat> if you're seated in a chair, you could extend that um, left foot in front of you and be pointing and flexing the foot. Those of us on the mat, we're gonna be rocking back and forth. And then inhale, lifting that back leg. Exhale, drawing the knee into the chest. Inhale, extend the leg long. Let's do three more of those. And then lower that foot to the floor. Again, gently rocking back and forth. <clears throat> We're going to lift that leg up, bending the knee, so 90 degree angle, just a few lifts, donkey kick. And then we're going to bring that leg out to the side. Sometimes for obvious reasons, this is called fire hydrant. <laughs> and we're going to do that in both directions. And then coming back to center. Lowering down into your version of child's pose, so knees could be together or spread wide. You can use your bolsters or blankets to rest on if you like. Hand can be turned to one side. Everybody still hearing me okay? So weird not to be able to see your beautiful faces. <laughs> no, Danielle and I both missed you guys. All right, so maybe three more breaths here. Maybe turn the head to the opposite side. And slowly coming back up. <clears throat> so we're going to come over our bolster. So those of you that are seated, I'll see if I can demo this after those of us on the floor come through. <clears throat> so we're going to bring our uh, right hand to the center of the mat. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, needling through. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, kneeling through. Now again, don't worry about if it seems like you and I are doing different sides. The most important thing is that we do opposite sides. And then the next time that you come to rest here, landing on the right shoulder, left fingers extended out. So you can stay right here with the extended fingers on the floor or lifting that arm up as an option. You can bring that arm back to rest on the sacrum. And grip around from the side. You get to the side where you want that to be. So seated folks, folks on your mat, you can stay there, seated folks. Imagine that I'm seated. I'm creating this triangular shape here. I'm inhaling up and needling through, right? Inhaling up and needling through. So if I were seated, I would have my back of my arm and shoulder coming to rest on me my thighs. So you could do this here in cross-legged, but also just in the chair. <clears throat> so 
The rest of us are here. <clears throat> Two more breaths. And slowly grounding down back to the center of your bolster or blankets. Inhale up. And exhale back down. Maybe another cat cow just to reset. And then we're going to move our bolster to the other side. So this time we've got our bolster on the outside of the opposite hip. I think if I'm mirroring correctly, that, that means the bolster's on the outside of the right hip. But again, um, you guys know that part's a challenge for me. So go ahead and line that up. Begin to feel really rooted through that back leg. Relaxing the hip, finding the breath. And again, if you are seated for this, um, seated your right foot, I mean, your right leg crosses over your left, and you'll be twisting towards the right. <clears throat> Those of us on our mat, inhaling up. Exhale, twisting towards that bolster or blanket. And lower down a couple more times. So if you're in a chair, Remember your right leg's on top of your left. You're twisting towards the right. And then coming down to rest. Head can be facing forward or head can be facing behind you. So facing in the same direction as your knees are going or behind you. Just one, three or so breaths here. And do a little time check. So it's time to press it fast, you guys. <clears throat> Couple more breaths here. And then grounding down through the palms, pressing yourself up. Make sure I'm not going to knock anything over when I come this way. So we're coming back to tabletop. Inhale, and as you exhale, we're going to step the opposite leg back. So, I think that's going to be stepping the left leg back, but again, just make sure you're doing the opposite side as before. <clears throat> I think maybe next time I shouldn't try to do any of this. All right, so rocking back and forth. If you're in a chair, you would just be extending that right leg out and pointing and flexing the foot. <clears throat> How you guys doing out there? <laughs> All right, so we're going to inhale and lift that back leg up. Exhale, drawing the knee into the chest. Inhale, extend long, neck is extension of the spine. Exhale, draw it in. Three more. And then extend that leg long once again. Rocking back and forth. I'm going to lift that leg back up, bending the knee 90 degrees. Lift and squeeze. And then we're going to find our fire hydrant circles. Low to your hips. And both directions. <clears throat> And then coming back to tabletop, inhale, and as you exhale, squeezing that um, left shoulder towards that tip, or whatever's opposite side. And inhaling back to center. So this time bringing the opposite hand to the center um, of your mat, bolster, or blankets. Inhaling that arm out. Exhale, needling through. Three times. Inhale up. Exhaling. And the next one that you come through, we're going to land here. Maybe walking that extended arm or fingers of that extended arm forward. If it feels safe and okay for your neck and shoulders, you can lift the arm up. Bring the hands to the sacrum or wrap around. Everybody on your mat, we'll stay here for another three to five breaths. 
So again, seated folks, if you were seated, seated in a chair, you would have your arm extended, hand on the knee, you're creating this needle space. Inhaling up, exhaling, needling through. Inhaling up, your feet would just be on the floor, or you could do it this way. If for any reason tabletop is uncomfortable for you or it's just too much pressure on your neck, um, you can all the way down the floor. Go back to here. <clears throat> That's the stage over. <laughs> all right. And slowly ground down one more time. Up. And coming back to tabletop. One more time in child's pose. You can use a bolster or not. You feel or blanket or towel or whatever you've got. <clears throat> Let's find three to five breaths here. I think we'll stay here in child's pose, maybe just as a transition pose for about a minute. So you guys can stay in child's pose if you're on your mat, if you are seated in a chair, you're just in a forward fold, arms are crossed and your head turned to one side. So just pausing here for a moment in child's pose. And just thinking about the gifts of our practice. One of the gifts of our practice being this opportunity to create space. And if you come to any of my classes, you know I talk about that a lot, right? That there is this micro-macro connection of when we create space within ourselves, uh, that that creates space in other places, right? Physical space, when we create more physical space through the movement part of our practice, we create more space emotionally, right? And vice versa. And then the even next level of that micro macro piece is that when we're doing that work individually on an individual level, it's affecting our interactions with other people, with our community. Um, and being able to create that space to have more capacity for these sometimes challenging emotions and challenging situations and fears, um, it just helps us to be able to approach all of that in a more congruent way, right? In a more aligned way, a way that's really in alignment with our best selves. So I think it's nice to think about all those things being connected, right? Sometimes we feel so overwhelmed, we don't know what to do, but just coming back to ourselves, that doesn't mean don't take actions, but coming back to ourselves and finding that place of alignment and congruency and soothing our nervous system and then coming back, right? Then coming back to action or interaction. <clears throat> All right, so let's come on up. On to our backs. I'm gonna do a time check. <clears throat> so we're coming on to our backs. Uh, if you're seated and not coming onto your back, that's fine. I'll try to remember to give all the directions for both. <clears throat> so come on to your back. Okay. Adjustments. <clears throat> and knees are bent. Let's just extend the arms out to the side, actually. And allow the knees to fall to the left. Inhale in the center, allow the knees to fall to the right. Moving all your stuff out of the way. <laughs> and line the head to fall to the other direction. If you're seated, you're just doing the same thing. Knees fall to one direction. Bring the head and upper body to the other side. Coming back to center, allow the feet to be at the outer edges of the mat. The knees come to rest on one another, so kind of like knock knee, you might call it. Allow the lower back to press into the mat as you allow the knees to rest inward on each other. That's potentially creating some space in the lower back in the sacrum. 
Since the femur bone is going to rotate out, that might feel nice on your lower back. If it doesn't, it's okay. You can do something else and just be with the breath. And then let's draw the right knee into the chest, extending the left leg long. Alternating legs. And drawing both knees into the chest, gently rocking from side to side. Let's we'll see if there's any other comments. <laughs> All right, so bringing both feet to the floor, I'm gonna do some more hip opening. I'm gonna move this blanket because it's getting in the way at the moment and also check on the post. Right, those are good. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna bring our right ankle to our left knee. And you can do this from seated. If you're seated, do the same thing. Left foot's gonna be on the floor and you're gonna bring the right ankle to the left knee. <clears throat> and those of us here on the floor. So just taking a moment, relax the shoulders. Maybe give yourself a little adjustment. You can place your hand at the crease of the right hip and gently press the right thigh away from the body. So if your hips are feeling tight, this might be where you want to stay. If it feels okay, inhaling and as you exhale, you're going to draw that left knee in towards the chest. Hands needle through to interlace under the knees. You can also interlace outside the knee, but just make sure if you choose outside that the shoulders can still stay relaxed and you're not having to lift your head or create a lot of tension there. So we're gonna find three to five breaths here. <clears throat> so this is sometimes called figure four needling um, or um, reverse pigeon or sleeping pigeon. If pigeon's a part of your practice and you'd rather be doing pigeon for this hip opener, feel free to do that. <clears throat> Sometimes people like to extend that left leg, extend the bent leg long. See how that feels. I'm going to flex the foot a little. And then we're going to release the left foot to the floor. That right ankle is going to stay right where it is, extending the arms out to the side. There's so much stuff on the floor, you guys. Inhale, and as you exhale, you're going to allow that right foot and that whole right leg to cross over. Okay, so the right foot's coming to the floor, arms are out to the side. Take a few deep breaths. So I've come into a twist. You're probably feeling it along the right IT band, right? That from the muscle that goes from the right hip up to the outside of the right knee. You can stay here, or if you'd like, you can take the left hand and reach down towards the right ankle, and then extend the right arm overhead. If you're trying this, right fingertips are extended away from the body. Think about that right hip drawing forward and down. So you're, this is increasing the space all on the right side of the body, increasing the space between the top of the hip and the bottom of the ribs or you can just have your arms out to the side. <clears throat> and then coming back to center, get my turn, shut. Okay. <clears throat> and let's draw both knees into the chest, gently rocking side to side. Maybe extend both legs long. And if you'd like, you can kind of run the hands out the outside of the legs and back down. If you ever have done dry brushing, that's the kind of emotion that we do with dry brushing to help the lymphatic system. I like to do this sometimes when I first wake up. <clears throat> All right, so releasing the feet to the floor. This time, let's see, I'll turn it around. So this one we're bringing left ankle <clears throat> to rest on the right knee. And again, just pause for a moment. I know often we like to go right into like, yeah, I know what's next, but hang out in that space in between for a minute. There's an invitation. You guys are always empowered to do what you like, but maybe some curiosity of what it's like to just hang out here for a moment. Again, relax the shoulders. 
with that feeling. Maybe bring the hand to the crease of the left hip and gently pressing the left hip away. Inhaling and as you exhale, drawing the right knee into the chest. So this could feel really different from one side to the other. My whole left side is a lot tighter than my right today, from my neck to my hip. <clears throat> so again, just receiving that information about ourselves and trying to do that with compassion um, in the way we would hear it from a beloved or a child, right? And someone else would say those things to us, we'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry that that's hurting or that that's happening. But when we're talking to ourselves, we're not usually, or not always that kind. Right? So maybe extending that leg long. Continue flexing. I barely get my toes on the screen there. <laughs> and then releasing feet to the floor. So left ankle stays where it is. On the right, extend the arms out to your side. Inhale and you exhale, twisting. So that left foot is coming to the floor. Left knee is facing up. Arms are out to the side in a T. Or you can reach that right hand down for the left ankle. Extend the left arm overhead. If you're doing that, extending the left arm overhead, be sure to also Think about drawing that left hip down, both down towards the floor and down towards the opposite end of your mat. And finding the breath. And three more breaths here. Coming back to center, <clears throat> drawing the knees back into the chest again, gently rocking side to side. Maybe extending the legs long, pointing and flexing. <clears throat> and then we're going to release the feet to the floor. Bring the hands by your side, pressing the palms into the floor, just coming into the tiniest of bridges. If you're seated here, so we're just lifting on the inhale and then lowering back down. If you're seated, um, you can come back to kind of a cat-cow here um, so that you're flexing the spine in that way. And then if you'd like, you might experiment with either coming into um, a taller bridge or swing bridge, which is inhale. Lifting the arms overhead and exhale, lowering down. And you can decide whether you want these to be tiny bridges or really tall bridges. That's your choice. I'm going tiny bridges right now. And then just taking a moment for any other movement that you feel like your body needs. Before coming into Shavasana, we're going to come back into an exercise with the breath um, one more time before coming all the way into Shavasana, but just taking a moment here. I'm coming up to seated just so I can see, um, but you guys, invitation to stay on your back, finding any other movement that you feel like you need. <clears throat> Put the music on in just a minute. All right, so before we come fully into Shavasana, I'm going to be on your back. Again, if you're um, in a chair, just being seated in a comfortable way with feet on the floor. If your feet don't reach the floor, you could put blocks or books or something underneath. <clears throat> so extending the heels away from the head, actively sending the heels away and down, arms are by your side, palms facing up, relaxing the shoulders. So we're going to kind of visually do that alternate nostril breath. Don't worry if it's actually happening only in the left and right nostril, but we're going to visualize inhaling through the left side of the body. So starting with the heel, inhaling up, pausing at the crown, 
Visualizing that exhale running down the right side of the body through the right heel. Visualize inhaling through the right heel all the way up the right side of the body, pausing at the crown, exhaling all the way down the left side. So just continuing at your own pace if that resonates. If not, just coming into whatever, whatever breathing pattern resonates for you. But maybe it's this inhaling along one side, exhaling along the other. We have meridians, energetic meridians all throughout the body. So I'm seeing this cyclical, I can't talk today, you guys, uh, movement of air and energy. So a few more rounds of breath this way. And as you're ready, release that breath. Coming in to whatever feels comfortable for Shavasana. So if you want to use some props here, you can put a roll blanket or bolster under the knees. You can recline across your blankets, cover yourself with your blanket. I'm trying to see if I can get connected for a little music here. If not, we'll just go into Shavasana. You guys just being comfortable on the back. Staying on the back or in whatever supported position feels comfortable. I shared with you guys last time that I'm being honest in my home practice, I don't always give myself Shavasana, especially when that's several minutes. Yogi Bhajan founded Kundalini Yoga for just 11 minutes a day. Imagine if we all get to ourselves that way. So as we're here in Shavasana, that's what my words today, guys. An invitation if you like, or you can just kind of tune my words out and let them move in and out. But if you like, an invitation to come back to that idea of openness and building space and capacity within ourselves. And maybe just asking yourself here in this moment, where is it in my life, whether that's physically on a personal level in relationship and community and advocacy, where is it that I desire or that I can benefit from more space, more capacity? And just notice if there's an answer might surprise you, might not be an answer, all those things are right and okay. Noticing if there's anywhere that you're feeling that information in your body in particular, anywhere in the physical body. And then if you did receive an answer to that, if you did receive an answer of a place or space or a thing that could use that increased space, increased capacity, what would that look like? Envisioning that for a moment. What, what do you envision coming out of that? 
Again, that might be physical. It might be completely internal. It might be in relationship to individuals. Broader sense to the community. And then if you have a vision that has come out of that, just asking yourself, are you open? Am I open to that vision coming, coming to life, coming forth? Am I open to receiving that possibility? I think oftentimes there's things that we really want for ourselves and for others, but just for human reasons, sometimes we're not really open to it. We don't really either think it can happen or believe it or there's some like piece in between that. So just with curiosity, like, am I really open to that? And if the answer is no, that's totally okay. Maybe just exploring that. And if the answer is yes, either way, just breathing into that, being with that. And just a reminder, as always, when I'm sharing these um, inquiries, this invitation, um, you're always welcome to just be with your own thoughts. If what I'm saying isn't resonating. And as you're ready, just releasing any thoughts, intentions, and you know, you can come back to those. Or really, if you are, are feeling a thing, then be welcome to stay here in Shavasana. But if it feels like it's time to come out, then coming onto one side. And finding your way up to seat in. <laughs> and then pausing here, maybe bringing the hands together, bringing the hands to the heart, pausing, maybe breathing into that openness or intention, if anything specific came up for you today. And then bringing the hands together at heart center. So in my Tuesday classes, I always in class, and I think we can do a similar thing here, but I like to end class with pausing together and gratitude. So gratitude for being together during this time that we have the space and bodies and technology to do that. And gratitude to Donnie and Soul for making this happen for the market to the farmers, the people who work in the stores, the truck drivers, everyone that makes the food, the bounty that's going to be at the market in just a little bit possible um, to be shared with community. So it's in that spirit of gratitude that the light and me honors and sees the light in each of you. Namaste. So thank you everyone. Again, if you um, are not watching this live or you need to come back to it, just stay on the Facebook page. You can just scroll down and there's one every Tuesday from 9.15 to 10. Danielle and I alternate the classes and um, we'll be continuing to do that until we get to see your beautiful faces in person again. So Big love to all of you, and hopefully I'll see some of you guys at the market. Um, wave to me if you're there. Bye, guys.